You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Attracting Your Life with host Maisha. Maisha is here to educate and discuss different concepts, modalities, and theories on supporting the vision of elevating the universal mindset. So now, please welcome the host of Attracting Your Life, Maisha. Welcome to Attracting Your Life. I'm your host, Maisha, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I hope you guys had a great week. I know I did. It was pretty, um, it was a little bit eventful, but it was all right. You know, um, sometimes you have to kind of go with the flow, but um, it was pretty good. Um, Chicago's weather is really good. Uh, Warmed up. It was really cool uh, for a while, but um, I don't know. Today's cold, so I don't know. It goes hot and cold, hot and cold, but that's just part of the way it is here in Chicago. So last week, I'm going to just dive into today's, we're talking about manifesting your desire part two. And last week we talked about the first foundational concept in manifesting your desire. And let me kind of just give you a brief summary. And, um, if during this time while we're on air, if you have any questions, please feel free to call me at 1-866-451-1400. Five, one, and we'll try to get your question in. But uh, like I was saying last week, we talked about the concept number one for this um, for this manifesting your desire. Uh, and that concept is that God is in all and all is in God, meaning you are connected to God's source energy and God's source energy is in you and you are in him or you're in God's source energy, him or her. Uh, towards the end of last week of the show, we started covering certain hindrances that may prevent us from really understanding the essence of concept number one. And one of those hindrances reside in our subconscious mind, and that pertains to your beliefs, your emotions, habits, values, and long-term memory. And all of this is formed and housed in your subconscious mind. Another fundamental idea that may hinder you from understanding concept one is the thought of impeccability, to be without sin. So anything that is viewed as a sin or a haram or daharm or any immoral act is actually an act against yourself because God and you are one. We also talked about how desires are easier to manifest than goals. And the reason is because desire is a strong feeling for a specific thing, person, or event that you would like to create, right? So the key word is feeling. And we're going to really dive into this feeling part today. The emotional drive associated with the desire is the key ingredient in manifesting. So... If you did miss last week's show, you can download it on the site that you're on right now. Click at the bottom of the screen and you can click on any of those shows. But last week's show, we talked about part one. So in today's show, we're going to talk about concept number two in this pragmatic approach to manifesting your desire. And that is heart-brain harmony. So let's first talk about the heart. The human heart is the strongest biological generator of electrical and magnetic fields. So our heart has the capability to generate the very fields that our world is composed of. So our world is composed of of magnetic and electrical fields. And this is what our heart generates. 
Physics states, if you want to change the components of reality, you need to change both the electric and the magnetic fields. When you have a feeling, it, it comes in your heart. And so in our heart, we're actually creating the electrical and magnetic waves that change the quality of atoms in our world. That's a lot, right? So all your feelings is actually changing the atoms in our world with the electrical and magnetic waves that it's emanating. Science has discovered that feelings literally interrupt the flow of space and time and rearrange the stuff that the world is made of. You know, I'm not a scientist, so stuff is my scientific word. <laughs> so what does this have to do with manifestation? So to the degree, just remember this, so to the degree that we are able to train and condition ourselves is the degree that we affect our reality. So our feelings, you got to remember that your feelings is what's actually creating these fields. For some, this is something very minimal. Others, it's like a miracle. While there are others, and I hope that you will be part of this group after receiving the information that is shared through this series, they are deliberate co-creators. And so let's talk more about that. This is why I made it a point to emphasize last week that the feelings are the key to manifestation. And if you remember, we started going through examples about how would you feel when you obtain your desire? How would you feel when you find that perfect mate that you've been looking for? How would you feel when you had that perfect job? And those are the feelings that you had to kind of stay in place. So we're talking about how the feelings that are generating the heart actually generate magnetic and electrical waves that change our universe. This is why feelings are so powerful. Ancient tradition states that we need to feel the feelings inside our heart for the things we want to experience as if it already happened. Rather than for you to, you know, state in this powerless kind of, I don't know, area of wanting and wishing and asking for it to happen. Feel the feeling as if it's already there, like it already created. So I, I don't remember who called and asked this question. She it was Mecca. She called and asked the question like, so, you know, what if I find myself out of that feeling or I'm not vibrating that? Get yourself back because those feelings that you're doing on a regular basis is what you're putting out to the universe. And you're changing. Science has said that these feelings are em that are created in your heart are emanating electrical and magnetic waves that change the world that we're in, change atoms. So um, there was one other thing that I kind of wanted to go over again, um, but I just don't want to beat a dead horse, but I, I just need you guys to really understand how this, the science is working in this. And I'm really kind of emphasizing the science tonight so that people understand that this is not some, you know, weird magical thing that I'm talking about. This has been actually proven through various, uh, Tesla kind of talked about, not kind of talked about this. Um, Einstein talked about this. These are all things that now that science is actually being are able to see it happening. These are things that were talked about in ancient times and they're coming together. So science has been able to show that we have these feelings and we are creating the electrical and magnetic, magnetic template, which is like the blueprint of our heart. And that's what we attract that's what makes the things attract to us. The universe feels the waves, hear the waves, and send back to you what you are sending out. The quantum stuff of the universe, they pick up on the magnetic waves and the electrical waves that you're sending out and emanate back to you what matches your feelings. So with all that being said, this is why I was really stating that feelings are part of the key ingredient in making things manifest. And so many of us, so many of us, we don't sit and stand in those feelings, but we're going to talk more about that when we come back from commercial break. 
Once again, you're listening to Attracting Your Life, and I'm your host, Maisha, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is Attracting Your Life, and I'm your host, Nyjah. And once again, we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And before the break, we were talking, and I was explaining how feelings are important and that these feelings come from your heart, and they em- your heart actually emanates waves to the universe that, are, that create the world, which is magnetic and electric um, waves. So we all do this from time to time, and some of us, you know, we're doing this Unconsciously, you know, we're not even aware of what we're doing with our feelings. But now, with this knowledge and various exercises and tools, and some of these exercises, not some of them, I really kind of go over all of this with my one on one clients. Or you can do your own research. You can study uh, physicist John Wheeler, and he was a colleague of Einstein. He talks about this process of the heart and the brain, and he states, or he calls it participating. So we participating in creating the reality that we live, whether it's in our personal body or the peace that is created between nations. We are all co-creators in making these things happen. We are in an age that science and ancient spiritual concepts are now finally coming together and recognizing that we're all one. And we're all part of this super consciousness, God source energy. So, The role that we play is based on the fact that we, as an individual, recognize our power, our God consciousness, and then we become a deliberate co-creator and ultimately the master of our universe. This changes everything once you understand this concept. For years, we've been conditioned to believe we are separate from the world, separate from God's source energy, and we have very little power of what happens in our world or that we're victims of circumstances and whatever life brings us is just the way it is, you know. But once you understand the power of the heart and your feelings and you realize that this is it, this is the main key ingredient, you release these old conditions of being a victim. That no longer serves you you start realizing who you are and whose you are. So that's the heart. So let's talk about the brain. Now, I know you've probably heard that thoughts create your reality. That's partly true. 
now, let's see, now studies, let me see. Yeah, there's been a lot of studies that the brain also generates electrical and magnetic fields, but they are really weak compared to what the heart produces. The heart is about a hundred times stronger electrically than the human brain. And 5,000, let me say it again, 5,000 stronger magnetically than the human brain. So if we're going to create a magnetic or electrical field that affects our reality, it's probably best done in the heart. I mean, it can be done with your thoughts, but it'll be difficult. It's just easier to feel the feeling in our heart to create that. So, so it's not that saying that things that you guys heard in the past, that it's all about our thoughts, our thoughts, it's just part of the concept. The other part is your feelings in your heart. So that's why it's kind of important to kind of understand how they merge together. Our brain creates the image of what we would like to see, what we would like to experience. We simulate and model all this, these concepts of what we want to create in our brain. Once we lock this image into place, we can feel the feeling of gratitude of what we have already, what has already happened, right? Because it's happened already in our mind. And by doing that, we give power to what we're thinking. So this is how concept two works in manifesting our desires. The heart and the brain must work in harmony. The images that the brain creates and the feelings that our heart feels come together in manifesting our desires. That's the key point. That's how it's so important to have that, to understand the feeling of what you would feel once you obtain whatever your desire and holding on to that feeling, because it has to be a steady flow of that energetic and magnetic, magnetic, magnetic wave going out to the universe to attract what you're trying to desire. I think last, yeah, last week I made an example of like, you know, if someone is looking for a mate and then all of a sudden they start saying, oh, there's no good men around. So you switched your feelings and your vibration. One minute you're saying that you want a mate, a wonderful mate. And the next minute you're saying that there's no good mate around. So now you're telling the universe now send me more, send me mates that are not good to me. So we have to constantly stay in the feeling and the de of the desire of what we want to create. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to call me at 1-866-451-1451. And so these practices, you know, they were well known in ancient tradition. They understood how the inner technology of our human body creates our desires and attracts them to us. And then be the master of your universe. This is nothing new. This is something that is talked about in the Sanskrit culture. It's also talked about in uh, Aztec culture. These are concepts that has been around for years. It's just that we lost it in the Western world, or we only talk about parts of it. And it's so important to get the whole concept together, the whole formula together to create with ease the desire that you want in your life. Now science is catching up and understanding how our beliefs, emotions, habits, values are all housed in our subconscious mind and how we as a culture have a history of giving a greater credence to our limits rather than understanding that we are empowered beings. That's huge. I mean, so many of us have been told through science or through church or through just things that are done in the house that, you know, we have to beg, plead or do these types of works to get favor from above for what we want in our hearts. And that that's not true. We're the ones who can create that. We're not powerless. We're, we're not victims. We create that. But it's important to have your thoughts and your feelings line up. There has to be an alignment, specifically when your your feelings have to be emanating out through the magnetic and through the energetic fields to tell the universe what you want to be attracted to you. So this even affects our 
this even affects how we kind of communicate with one another. If you don't understand who you are, you don't even understand the person that you're talking to. So it's, it's really empowering to understand that God consciousness. But we're going to talk more about this when we come back from a commercial break. Once again, I'm your host, Maja, and you're listening to Attracting Your Life. And we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Welcome back. You're listening to Attracting Your Life, and I'm your host, Maja, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And before the commercial break, we were talking about these limiting beliefs that have been ingrained in our culture that we are powerless beings. But whether you're conscious of that or not, our subconscious beliefs about this powerlessness and this victim mentality affects everything and affects our world. It affects how you communicate with one another. This concept, this, this hidden belief, it even affects conscious super spiritual beings like Tibetan monks, gurus, oracles, you know, there's a place within their being that the theme of being powerless and victim still resides inside of them. And this is what stands between them and their greatness. It's not a weakness per se in one individual. It's a weakness as us in a consciousness mindset. And this is what now is the time for us to change and shift that. The knowledge is being, is, is, you know, is being transmitted Books are being written about it. People are having these con- these conversations that they are godlike and they're understanding the power that is within them. So this is a shift from the belief of, you know, begging, pleading and wanting this lack that's residing in us and understanding that we are empowered beings and that we are the ones who are creating what we want in our life. And as I was explaining before the break, you know, this is nothing new. This is actually um, from a Sanskrit uh, tradition, and which is the root of the concept of number two, of concept two. There are seven energy systems which are called chakras, and we can go over chakras in a greater detail in another show. But what I really want you guys to understand here is that the three lower chakras, which kind of start right above your navel and go down to your tailbone, those are the lower chakras. And the upper chakras, it starts from your throat and up to the crown of your head. And in the middle of these three, the upper and lower chakras is your heart chakra. The energy centers are directly linked to manifesting. These chakras are directly linked to us 
uh, manifesting things in our in our life. So if you find so people who do understand chakras, this is why it's so op- important to ensure that they're they're. You're, you're having energy work cleanse that you're they're rotating you're they're, you're feeling them you're um, working your chakras to ensure that they're open um, I offer to my one-on-one clients energy work sessions because this helps with me- the manifestation process this is why so many of us sometimes are stuck in a rut because our chakras are closed or they're dark or um, they're not not fully de- developed there's a lot of um, things that can happen to that. And we could talk about that more in a different show. But the three upper chakras are linked to our thoughts and communication process, while the three lower chakras are linked to our emotions. But the Sanskrit culture and tradition, they define emotions different than we do right now. They state that there are only two primary emotions that we're capable of, capable of love and whatever you view as the opposite of love. So it's like two polarities of the same energy housed in one area. So for many people, they think love in the contrast is fear. But when you think about all our emotions that we know now, joy, happiness, they're linked to either love or fear. So love, joy, happiness, linked to fear, linked to love and fear, linked to jealousy, hatred, that's all linked to fear. So think of those as like the main concept and everything else falls into that, under there. So in the ancient Sanskrit states that the way we manifest is that our upper energy chakras is where we think and imagine. So once we have the image and the concept of what we would like to to create. We start speaking it through our throat chakra. And this is where affirmations are. Some people, they they only do affirmations using their upper region chakras. And they don't pull in the emotions to it. So they are empty and useless. This is why a lot of people got frustrated with stuff with the things that we're talking about in the secret and do affirmations do it three times a day. If you don't pull the lower three energies, the feelings, the lower three chakras, the love or the fear, then they're empty. And the way that you do that is by pumping and circulating the lower energy centers, our love for what we're thinking or opposite, our fear of what we're thinking. And all of those feelings, the love and fear, are generated in the lower three chakras. So by marrying, marrying, yeah, I'm saying it right, marrying, harmonizing our thoughts and our emotions to the center heart chakra, we create the feelings that create the energetic and magnetic waves that speaks to universe of what our heart desires is. So it's the upper chakras and energy houses that are creating the thoughts and we speak them out. And the lower part of the chakras that are creating the, the emotions, they all come together and unite in the heart chakra and then produces outward the energetic and magnetic waves that tells the universe what our heart desires is. Feelings is what creates. Let me say that again. Feelings is what creates. This is why so many people got frustrated once again about um, what was being told, just part of what was being told in like the movie, The Secret or the book, The Secret, or a lot of other um, incomplete concepts uh, that are discussed in mainstream about the law of attraction. They tell you to feel feel it, but they really don't explain the science part of it. You got to understand why your feelings are the drawing, the creating factor of making that manif- that desire manifest. So when you put those together into the center heart chakra, that's what the creation comes from. And we'll talk more about this when we come back. We're going to go to a commercial break. Once again, you're listening to Attracting Your Life Radio. I'm your host, Maisha, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. 
Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, no, there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. Welcome back, everyone. This is Attracting Your Life, and I'm your host, Maja. And once again, we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And before the break, we were kind of, not kind of, but we were discussing about the feelings and how the feelings and the thoughts, they kind of, they merge together in our heart chakras and emanate the feelings that tell the universe what we would like to create. Um, Mecca, I hear that you're still online, that you have a question for us. Would you like to, what's yeah. your, are you still there? Okay. What's your question? Yeah, I'm still online. I wanted to know, um, you know, if, understanding like if, your feelings and your upper chakras are all pieces that need to be in line to help manifest things that you would like to manifest. Um, are there mm-hmm. ways, if one is not familiar with chakras, like what are ways to get your shock, your upper chakras in line with what you want to manifest? Like how do you make them strong? How do you become in touch with that, you know, on a, on a very baseline level? Okay. Okay. Um, that was a good question. Thank you for the question. I appreciate that. Um, I am going to, have a show. I don't know exactly when, uh, I don't have my schedule in front of me of talking all about the chakras, but on a base level, let me kind of just go over the chakras. Um, let's start with the base, which is at the root and that's, uh, I'm going to go with the colors that's red. And it's like at the, um, it's like at your lower spine area and right above that and it's color red. And this is like right by your, um, yeah, your pubic bone area. And then, so, um, the, the next one is your orange, which is a sacral chakra. And then the third one is your solar plex, which is yellow, which is like right above your belly button. So these three chakras are what I was talking about is your emotional chakras that have to be in, be in line with the thoughts that you have with the upper chakra. So one technique that I teach people once we've done an energy work, I, it's really important for you to, um, have either a Reiki session or uh, any energy work healer to really cleanse these chakras. And then when you're at home, you can rotate these chakras, just basically imagining like a ball between your body and moving your hands, probably like, mm, two or three inches from where the chakras are at and just rotating it in a circular motion. And then you kind of go, you always start from the bottom and you go all the way up to the top chakras. Another um, way of kind of getting yourself in line is wearing colors of the chakras, you know? So um, since we're trying to keep your emotions balanced and keep them in line for what you're trying to create, 
Start wearing red, start wearing orange, start wearing yellow. It's very important to have and attract and keep yourself up with these feelings that are in line with the thoughts of what you're trying to manifest. That, that would be the most simplest way that I would say for on a basic level on how um, okay. you can keep your chakras in line for that. Did I answer your question? No, it did. It just kind of, yeah, to kind of give me an idea of what that means and what that looks like for me. Okay. Thank cool. you. Thank you so much for, for calling, Mecca. Thanks for your question. Um, there's another caller on the line, Kimberly. I'm trying to manifest something. Um, number one, if it's not happening, how do you know if it's your chakras or not that's blocking you? How do you know that that might be the problem? And number two is how do you get people to manifest? Like how do you help them to learn how to manifest? Okay. Um, so let me talk about the first part. So when you see that you've been doing the affirmations, you've been trying to keep yourself in line with the feelings with that are in line with this thought of what you want to desire that you would like to create and you're still not manifesting that is a key indicator that maybe the chakra, the heart chakra mm -hmm. may be blocked. And a lot of times our heart chakra is blocked because of unforgiveness, hardening of our hearts, things that we have not released and how we haven't, um, forgiven ourselves or forgiven others. Those are things that we house in our body and house in these energy, um, centers in our chakra. And as I was explaining to Mecca, it's important for a person to either some find a way to open up these chakras. And, um, one thing is going to a healer, getting it open, or you can get a book on it. There's a lot of good books about chakras and opening up the energy, finding things online and just kind of working through it. Always work from the bottom up to the top, going all the way up using incense sticks that are, um, like hem incense sticks that are, they have one for each of the chakras. Those are good. There's something about the senses of smelling certain smells. So that's why I, I laugh when people tell me, Oh, this, this smell hurts my head or this smell hurts this. Or I don't like this smell. Really when a person says that they don't like a smell, it's something about that smell that it's opening something for them that maybe they're uneasy about. And depending on if the smell is flowery or spicy kind of determines like what type of chakra is they're having a problem with. Um, another way is basically vibration. So, um, we're going to have, um, a wonderful shaman who's going to come to our, to on the radio show. And he's going to talk about the energy work that he does through sound. He does sound healing. There's something about sound that kind of breaks the barriers and kind of shakes off things that no longer serve us in these energy centers. And just basically the vibration of the sounds he uses like an old, not old he used the gong. I don't know if you remember, even remember the gong show. It's like a big mm. cylinder, it's like it's a big circular yeah. thing. He just like pings it. Yeah. And it's just something about that vibration to just kind of goes through you and it just, it cleanses your energy houses. So those are things that um, people can do that when they see that, you know, their affirmations and their feelings are in line, but they're still not manifesting um, what they would like to desire, what, what they desire. And another time it's, um, and this is why it kind of depends on what you're trying to create. Cause sometimes we're, we haven't created the environment for it. So the chakra centers isn't creating the environment in our bodies, but also the environment around us may not be ready for what you're trying to manifest in your life. So there's other things that we would have to look at. And when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, those are the kind of things we talk about, you know, is your environment ready for what you're trying to create? Do you have the right mindset for that, what you're trying to create? All of these are factors that, I work with clients one-on-one -on, -one on making unhousing. Like for example, you know, when you are, you know, getting a new car or having, or you're pregnant, 
you, you get your environment ready for this new concept, this new idea, this new baby, this new thing that you're giving birth to. So it's preparing the house as well. That was a very good question, Kimberly. I hope I answered your question. And um, we can talk more about different products that I offer to customers on working, uh, clients working one-on-one. But we're about to go to commercial break. Um, you're listening to Attracting Your Life. I'm your host, Maja, and stay tuned. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back, everyone. This is Maisha, and you're listening to Attracting Your Life. And we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And before the break, I was answering a question from Kimberly about basically about how do you know, you know, what's happening to you if you're not manifesting what you like to desire, what what your desire is. And we kind of went over maybe it's your chakras that are blocking in different ways to unblock them. Um, but I am being a, Jevin, are you still online? Do you have a question? Yes, I'm on the line. Uh, yeah, so my question it probably uh, kind of builds on what Kimberly was saying, but in working with you, um, you know, what is the process like? You know, is this, does everything need to be done in person? I know you mentioned some of the energy work may need to be done prior to some of the manifesting. Um, is it you providing your, your uh, clients with assignments, things we should be doing? What, what does the process look like? That's a great question. Thank you for the question, Jevin. So um, I have packages that I have available online. And the first always starts with a free initial consultation. I really need to understand who that person is and what they would like to create. And depending on how in, intense the desire that they're trying to cre- create and how far are they from being in line with that desire. So someone is telling me that they would like to, I'm just going to throw something out there. You know, somebody wants to, you know, be married by the end of the year, but they have such negative beliefs about the men because of the men that they've been around or woman, you know, a man wants to be married at the end of the year, but he has such negative beliefs about the women that he's been dating. And he has such a negative view about that. So we would kind of talk one-on-one and kind of create a you know, an assessment and a customized plan. And it doesn't mean the person has to be here in Chicago. I can do this online. I do it through Zoom. There's something about seeing one another. The energy is still transmitted through by seeing one another and talking to each other. And we have um, 15-minute weekly accountability sessions. I do, uh, for example, for a six months package, you have two Akashic readings. And so the Akashic readings, and we haven't talked about Akashic reading, but that's an energy field as well. And we really talk about 
what does the soul desire? Because so many of us may have desires on this level, on the physical level, that may not be in line with our soul. So that could be an issue of what's not happening for you, because maybe what you would like here on this realm, on this lifetime, may not be in line with what your soul is going for. So those things come out. That's why the Akashic Records is uh, reading is probably the first thing that I do. And then from there, we'll go from energy sessions. For the six months plan, you have two energy sessions. You do a Reiki sessions. And neither one of those do you have to be in person. So I had a client who asked me, how are we going to do Reiki? And you're not, you know, I'm not in the same state with you. I always ask for a picture. Uh, preferably a picture of them standing so I can see them from head to toe. And we do work through actually, um, uh, well, it's true. We kind of do the work through the picture and through that time. So I asked them during the time that they have set for the appointment for the Reiki session or for the energy work to be in tune with me, to be in meditation during that time so that they can feel the energy waves that are going out. There's so many different research that found that people don't even have to be in the same room for energy work to occur. And with Reiki, it's so non, how do I say, it's not, um, I'm not in going into someone's space that permission is not really required versus the Akashic records. I need the person's permission before I go into their soul's record. But Reiki is something, it's a, it's an ancient tradition. It's just me sending out love and, um, the, the love is actually, um, viewed with different symbols of healing symbols. And people have been amazed that they may have never told me that they had pain in their back or pain in their knee. And then all of a sudden after a Reiki session that they had even long distance, they were able to feel healing or heat in their in their knee or heat in their back. During these times also, we're having month calls where we're talking about creating and manifesting that desire that they have. But it's, once again, it's so important to get that energy work. And during the energy work, um, I observe your energy field, you know, which includes your aura, your chakras, your emotional and physical and mental, spiritually, spiritual and energy bodies. I use information that I see and communicate with these bodies in helping you clean your aura and clean these issues that you have, habits, beliefs, concerns that you're having. Some, so many people carry the concerns and beliefs and uh, thought process that no longer serve them in their lower back. So many people suffer from lower back or knee issues. These are all things that has to do with thing that uh, beliefs or ideas that no longer serve them or traumas, they haven't released completely from their energetic field. So all of this has to be cleansed to prepare the house for the desire that you're, that you would like to create in your life. So it's not a clean cut way. Um, I have 12 month package and I have a six month package and you can go online and kind of, you know, know about it, but it, it always starts with an assessment. And from the assessment, we develop like a plan. And we have 15-minute accountability calls every week, and we have um, our session calls. Um, and we can do it through Zoom. Or if you're here in Chicago, we will set up a time that we can see each other in person. But for energy work, you don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be one-on-one -on -one that I'm able to be touching you and being with you. There's energy transmits, like what we were talking about together today. The energy just transmits through the universe. So that was a very good question. I hope I answered it, Jevin, for you, if you have any more yeah, questions or concern. Okay, good. Thank you so much for that. <clears throat> and you. Jevin brought a good point. Uh, thank you. You don't have to be in the Chicagoland area to work with me. Um, I have people all over. Actually, I have only one client who actually lives in London, and we just have to do things with the time zone. But energy floats throughout the universe. And we'll talk more about that when we come back from commercial break. Um, 
Once again, you're listening to Attracting Your Life. I'm your host, Maja, and we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Stay tuned. Psychologist, master certified coach, and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various business interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Welcome back, everyone. This is Attracting Your Life, and I'm your host, Maja. And once again, we're coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And before the break, we were answering questions, some really good questions that came in. Thank you so much, everyone, for calling with your questions. But I want to just come back to concept number two. I just want to make sure that there's a clear understanding that feelings is what creates and it sends out the electric and magnetic wave to the super consciousness field, the universe, God source energy, whatever you would like to call that field, and to basically attract the desire that you want. This is why it's so important to feel what you want to experience as if it's already done. So the universe can give you back what you are sending out to it. So it's, it's a conversation. It's a conversation through your heart and your feelings. You're shouting out to the universe. This is what I want. This is what I want. I want this. And the universe gives it back to you. So if you are in fear, you're basically telling the universe, this is what I want. I want more of this issue. So that's why people who have affirmations regarding their finances, they say, I want to be free from debt. The universe hears it as, I want more debt because that affirmation is rooted in fear. The word debt is full of lack. So it's rooted in fear. So you're telling the universe, I want more fearful situations, more debt to come back into my life. That's why a better affirmation regarding your finances would be, I attract money into my life. Money flows to me. I circulate money. I'm I'm wealthy. I have a wealthy mindset. But you can say all of that, but if your if your environment doesn't reflect that mindset, you can talk about it until the cows come home, but it will never really occur. Your feelings, your environment, your emotions, your thoughts, they all need to be in line. It's just not one part of it. It's a whole it's a it's a universal system that works all together. So that's what you know, Javin was asking a question. I really like that question about working with me, working with me. We kind of, we find, we look at the holistic, everything about you. We just don't look about what you're trying to manifest. Oh, I just want to create a new job. And that's, that's all we're going to look at. We're going to look at every aspect. 
is your mind ready for this particular job? You say that you want a job in technology, but you haven't taken a technology class. You know, and I know I'm I'm being very basic about it, but it's it's about really understanding the mind, body, and soul concept in manifesting your desires. That is so important because not one of these facets are more important than the other. All of them must work together. If you have a subconscious belief that doesn't serve you in creating, you're not going to create. So it's important to have it all work together. These were some great questions and concepts that we went over today, and I am thrilled to talk to you about it every week. Next week, we're going to be finishing the last part of this series where we're going to talk about steps on how you can release values, beliefs in your subconscious mind that no longer serve you. And I'm going to give you four, I think yeah, it's four steps on what I usually kind of go one-on-one with people about how to merge both the mind and the heart. When you have a thought and your feelings, how do you merge them together? So it's so important for us to kind of put all of this together. And it's a pleasure to talk to you, but it's also a pleasure to work with you. So many of us think that we can just do this one-on-one, but it's important to have like a coach, someone who can walk you through the concepts. And we're just talking about it here on the radio on a very general basis, but having an accountability coach that talks to you every week to see where you are and you have, and you know that you're going to be talking to me every week. And we're going to talk about what your issues are and having that energy work of cleansing, because if you've never done it before, you may need to be done. It may even need to be done two or three times and that's okay. We can add that to the package. It's all about creating what works for you. So once again, thank you so much for listening. This is Attracting Your Life. I'm your host, Maisha, and it's always a pleasure. We'll listen to you or we'll come back next week when we talk about the, uh, the final part of Manifesting Your Desire. You have been listening to Attracting Your Life with your host, Maisha. Listen each week as Maisha will help you become more aware and tap into the universal conscious mind here on Attracting Your Life with Maisha. been listening to the bbm global network the ideas views and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas views and opinions of the bbm global network company